Good morning, everyone. Lee Henson here, president and founder of Agile Dad, and it's time for today's edition of the Daily Stand-Up. Without any further ado, let's get started. Today, I wanted to expand you know, on one very important milestone that we've made. This is officially episode number 100 of the Daily Stand-Up, and if you would have told me 100 episodes ago that we would have made it this far, you know... We have, we we can't say enough about the people who subscribe and the people who are listening. We can't say enough to the people who listen to each and every episode. We appreciate you. We appreciate your enthusiasm, and we're just so excited to continue this. And we hope that we can make it to our next milestone, which is going to be episode 200 here in not too long. So for episode 100, I wanted to keep going with the same mentality that we had yesterday. So yesterday we discussed what makes a great Scrum product owner, what makes a great Agile product owner. Today I want to keep going referring back to this InfoQ article that I read about what makes a great Scrum master. And I love that they kick it off with involving a team with setting up the process or framework. You know, a great Scrum Master ensures that the entire team supports the chosen Scrum framework and understands the value of every event they'll be participating in. The daily stand-up or Scrum, for example, is planned at a time that suits all team members. Uh, A common concern is about the number of meetings or the types of meetings or how long they take or what the team's involvement would be with the planning framework. So you want to make sure that you involve the team early, involve the team often, get their buy-in, and let them know that you value them. And I think that that's just an incredible way to really kick things off. Uh, they also discuss talking, uh, they also discuss lightly understanding team development. You know, I think when they're talking about this, it reminds me of Bruce Tutman's Forming, Storming, Norming, Performing. Uh, forget about our journey. We want teams to stay together as long as we can. But the importance of stable team composition cannot be underestimated. It's important for the Scrum Master to understand that teams are going to go through these things. And it becomes their duty to not just enable the team by constantly removing impediments. It becomes their responsibility to really dig in and say, if I'm going to be an effective Scrum Master and if I'm going to be a good coach, What type of things can I change? What type of things can I update? You know, how can I make sure I understand where the team is and what can I do to enable and empower them to be better without enabling them in such a way that it becomes negative? A good or great scrum master also understands that principles are more important than the practices. You know, without a solid understanding of the agile principles and foundations, it doesn't matter. Every implemented practice is useless. Uh, It becomes an empty shell, scrum a name only. An in-depth understanding of what Agile principles are by everyone involved and a review of those. You know, previously we talked about the daily stand-up being 30 seconds per person, not to exceed 15 minutes. I'm a firm believer that once a week that the scrum master should take advantage of the remaining time and review those principles with the team, whether it's the principles that support the Agile Manifesto or basic Agile framework principles, just to reinforce and make sure the team's all still on the same page and that they have a clear understanding of what's expected of them. A great scrum master recognizes and acts on team conflict. You know, I'm not saying that they have to solve the problem, but I think they have to understand that Conflict doesn't necessarily mean something's wrong. You know, healthy conflict, constructive disagreement leads to better solutions and it can build an even stronger team. What I found is that teams who reach high performing do have conflict at some point. I think it's important for the scrum master to really be heads up and acknowledge that and make sure they're aware and they understand. I love that this was included in this list. A great scrum master dares to be disruptive. You know, I think Scrum Masters understand that changes occur, but some changes only happen if the Scrum Master takes the reins. Uh, She knows when it's necessary and is prepared to be disruptive enough to enforce a change or to make a change within the organization and to be able to stand behind it and explain the importance of making those pivotal adjustments. I think that if we're ever going to get to the point where we could say that our Agile framework is a state of mind and that we're being Agile and practicing Agile, not just doing Agile, You know, we need to really have a good understanding of this cultural shift and we need to dare to be disruptive in order to be an effective scrum master. A great somewhere, a great scrum master is also aware of the smell of the place. I love this. A great scrum master can have impact on the culture of the organization so that scrum teams can really flourish. 
they understand that changing people's behavior isn't about changing the people, but changing the context they're in. You know, I love that they call it the smell of the place because you often hear me refer to uh, scrum stink or agile funk. I, I talk about that all the time. And I ask my advanced scrum masters or even a scrum master professionals, you know, how can you get to a point where you understand what the smell is? You know, I often refer to the scrum master as a doctor and they should have the ability to sense out those smells and diagnose and make sure they're writing the right prescription. A great scrum master is both dispensable and wanted. Now that sounds weird, but they've supported the growth of the team so well that the team kind of feels like they don't need him anymore. You know, on a daily basis, they might not need that person around. But because of their proven contribution, they'll often get asked for advice frequently. They'll, they'll get asked to be involved. Their role sort of morphs from a daily coach or teacher to a periodical true mentor and advisor, where the team really relies on them for the things that they need, but they don't necessarily want them to solve day-to-day issues, things that they can take on themselves. And that leads me to a great Scrum Master lets their team fall occasionally. You know, Scrum Masters know when to prevent the team from falling in a life-or-death situation, but they also understand, you know, that there are times when you shouldn't prevent it. The lessons learned when you fail. Failure breeds innovation. Failure breeds this strong team atmosphere. And I think it's important for Scrum Masters to really know you know, when to, when to act and when to let the team fall. I often use the adage that a young child uh, can, you can tell a young child 98,764 times that the stove is hot. They'll never discover that the stove is hot until they actually touch it. And, you know, while I don't ever wish for a child to touch the stove, the truth is you could tell them until you're done telling them and they'll still end up touching the stove at some point. A great scrum master encourages collective ownership. They encourage the team to take ownership of what's going on, the framework, the process, tasks, the task wall, environments, tools. You know, they want the team to be actively engaged and take ownership of what they're doing because they want the team to have cooperative ownership of everything that exists within that Agile Scrum framework. A great Scrum Master has faith in self-organization. Uh, they understand the power to self-organizing teams. You know, bring it to the team is their, is their mantra. Uh, They want to make sure that they understand that self-organizing teams are the people that reduce their dependency on management and increase the ownership of their work. I love that quote. Reduce your dependency on management, increase ownership of the work. They make decisions about their work. Estimates, they estimate their work. They have strong willingness to cooperate. And they love coming together to achieve a common purpose through release goals, sprint goals, team goals. And they know what direction they're heading. They, they value things. They, a good Scrum Master values rhythm. They understand the value of a steady sprint rhythm and a steady stream in order to remain predictable. Sprint rhythm should become the team's heartbeat, which doesn't cost energy. And everybody's focused and knows exactly where they uh, should be in line. A great Scrum Master knows the power of silence. That's a good one because sometimes you need to just listen. Uh, you know, there's a reason your creator gave you two ears and only one mouth, and it's not so Beats by Dre headphones can sound better. It's that you listen twice as much as you speak. I think that you know you have to be aware of the three levels of listening. Uh, this will make another great podcast on its own. But uh, level one involves internal listening. Level two involves focused listening. And level three involves global listening. And you know how to use each one, and we'll talk about those a separate time. A great scrum master is a great observer. Uh, they observe their team daily, their team's daily activities. They watch over. They don't necessarily have an active role within every single session, uh, but you know the daily scrum, for example, it's led by the team and it's for the team. But they do observe and help to draw focus on anything that might need attention. A great scrum master is frequently shares experiences. They're a great storyteller. Uh, they could be within an organization, but also, you know, they, they, they share what they learn at seminars and conferences and they share their experience and knowledge. They write down and share lessons learned. You know, I I think it's just important for them to become an effective leader. You know, one of the things that I often say about scrum masters is to have a backpack full of tricks, right? (laughs) A great scrum master can apply lots of different retrospective formats, for example, 
uh, you know, they don't want to just stick to one thing. They want the retrospective to always be fun, useful, and engaging. She knows that the format that's most suitable for a given team situation could change. And even better, he or she supports the team by hosting their own retrospective to improve involvement uh, and, and make sure to get everyone's opinion and make it an absolute winner. A great scrum master can also coach professionally. They understand the power of professional coaching and they've mastered this area of study. They frequently read books about coaching agile teams or, or active coaching and you know, they know how to guide without without just directing. Uh, they they know how to close gaps between thinking about and doing thinking about doing and actually doing the work. They can help team members understand themselves better, so they can find new ways to to make the most of their potential. You know, a great scrum master has influence at the organizational level. They know how to motivate and influence t- a tactical and strategic level. Some of the most difficult impediments a team can face are at these levels. Therefore, it's important for the Scrum Master to know how to act at different levels within an organization. A great Scrum Master prevents impediments. They don't just fix them. They, you know, if you spend all your time resolving impediments, you never get around to preventing them. So if you have the experience in the trenches, help prevent impediments. Help the team see things before they happen. I think one of my favorites in the entire batch is this next one. A great Scrum Master isn't noticed. They're not always known as the active participant. They're not always actively present. They don't disturb the team unnecessarily. Uh, they let everybody get into a flow, and they're there when they need them. And I think that's you know a formidable task, but it's something that needs to be done. A great Scrum Master also forms a great partnership, a dynamic duo with the product owner. You know, we want them to understand and have a good partnership and relationship with the product owner, even though their interests are somewhat different. They should push each other to do better, and together they can build a great foundation for the results that they expect. A great Scrum Master allows for leadership to thrive. You know, they want to see leadership be successful. Leadership isn't just a title, it's an attitude, and they need to make sure it's an attitude that everyone on the team can apply so that they can all be good leaders. A great Scrum Master understands there's more than just Scrum. So it's not all about Scrum. I often say as a Scrum trainer, I'm teaching Scrum, uh, Scrum Master courses, that if you're just doing Scrum, you're setting yourself up for failure. They should be competent with terms from XP, Kanban, Lean, etc. They know strengths and weaknesses. They understand different frameworks. They lead by example and set themselves out front and make sure that even at difficult times, they show that they're acting on things and they don't panic and they maintain control. You know, uh, and last but certainly not least, a great scrum master is a born facilitator. You know, they have facilitation and it's second nature to them. Every scrum event is a joy to attend and every meeting is well prepared. It's useful. It's fun. And we have a clear focus on outcomes and not output. You know, I think these qualities, these attributes are things that we often overlook. And I think it's just so critical that we really focus on a scrum master when we can so that we can have that power. This episode 100 went a little long, but I hope that you still enjoy it. I encourage you, as always, to visit visit AgileDad.com where you can learn more about this topic and many others. And as always, we encourage you to email us at learnmore at AgileDad.com with your ideas for episodes for future podcasts. As always, we encourage you to stay well, stay healthy, and stay agile, my friends. Thanks again for an amazing 100. Until next time, do take care.